Good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, the time is now 10 o'clock, and we want to thank you for taking the time to come and be present here at this press conference, uh, which, uh, which is comprised really of uh, a group of gentlemen in our community who have um, given up their time and resources to be here and their personal willingness, so we want to thank them in advance. Um, in no particular order, I'd like to introduce them this morning, and then from there they will take uh, the podium and answer any questions you may have. Uh, this morning we, with us we have uh, Mr. Joe Rivera, who is a former director of the Bureau of Budget, uh, of Bud of Budget Management and Research. Um, we have um, Mr. Arda Login, uh, former director of the Department of Revenue and Taxation and presently the uh, uh, Insurance and Banking Commissioner. We have uh, Mr. Rick Duenas, a certified public account accountant, and he's also the son of um, Chief Judge Cristobal C. Duenas, who was also a Knight of St. Sylvester and former chairman of the uh, uh, the uh, parish, the Cathedral Basilica's Parish Finance Council. Uh, joining him is uh, Father, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Richard Antelon, who is the uh, former chairman, the past, immediate past chairman of the Archdiocesan Finance Council. Deacon Steve Martinez, a former Archdiocesan Finance Officer. And we also have uh, Mr. Jerry Titano, who is the current president of the Cathedral Basilica's Parish Council. Uh, we also want to acknowledge um, some of our community members who are here this morning, parishioners, supporters, and uh, family members of Monsignor James. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome the panel, and again, thank you for being here. Sizuus Masi. Good morning. By the way, I also was in the Archdiocese and Finance Council with Mr. Antalan, and I'm currently the Chief Financial Officer for Cabo Enterprise. Okay. Good morning. My name is Joe Rivera, and with me today are Ardi Lagan and Rick Duenas. Each of us was asked by Monsignor James to help to address and implement the accounting recommendations raised by Deloitte and Touche regarding the Cathedral Basilica and the Catholic cemeteries. We felt compelled to speak out after the Archbishop released a statement accusing Monsignor James of financial practices that were grave and detrimental to the Archdiocese. Nothing is further from the truth. The three of us, along with the staff and volunteers of the Cathedral Basilica and the Catholic cemeteries, have been working diligently to address any accounting problems, and most, except for one, have been corrected, and that last one is ready to be corrected. Key staff have met periodically with Deloitte and Touche several times over the course of this review. These meetings were fruitful and productive, and the staff has always left these meetings with the impression that Deloitte and Touche was pleased with the progress and the amount of work accomplished. In fact, the Archbishop himself, in a letter dated June 26, 2014, addressed to Monsignor James a mere six weeks ago, acknowledged that much corrective action had been accomplished. In that letter, the Archbishop, based on the recommendations of Deloitte and Touche, instructed Monsignor James to have the financial statements ending June 30, 2014, ready to be submitted by August 15 of this year. As we all know, Monsignor Beneventi was never given that opportunity as he was removed on July 29, 2014. Based on our review of the financial position of both the Cathedral Basilica and the Catholic cemeteries, it is our professional opinion that the allegation of financial mismanagement was not supported by the facts. Please refer to the attached documents that we will be passing out, as well as in addition to the response from Monsignor James Beneventi, where these accounting issues have been specifically addressed point by point. Thank you. That's my statement, or our statement. Um, okay, so would you say that the financial mismanagement or the financial disarray that was in the Archdiocese predates Monsignor James's administration? Many of the items did predate uh, Monsignor James. Yes, the answer is yes to that question. Okay. Now, since Monsignor James took over and, and was the director and the director of the Catholic Cemeteries, um, how much progress was made in trying to correct the, the financial um, mismanagement? I'm going to refer you to the attachment that you'll be getting as part of your packet. There were five allegations on there. Of those five allegations, if you'll note, two of them were already completed and addressed by Deloitte and Touche in their January 8, 
2012 uh, uh, letter that was, uh, that was already printed also. Um, and another two were addressed in documents that were submitted to the Archdiocese to Deacon Dominic Kim by the cemetery's uh, staff in May 21st. So that's two months prior to this letter. And as I said earlier in, my, in our statement, the remaining item was already being worked on. So would you say that in, months, in um, Archbishop Aperon's letter that came out a few months after the Deloitte and Touche review, um, would you say that that was misinterpreted by um, the Archbishop or whoever wrote that letter? Whoever wrote that, um, I think you'd have to ask them how, how they came about with their conclusions. What we wanted to present to you are the facts, and, and what we're, we're presenting are um, the statements of Deloitte and Touche that you can see in their report, and uh, you compare that with the statements that were, were uh, sent out by the Archdiocese. Okay, I'll say that there are certainly um, uh, things in the report that the Archbishop No, what I'm saying is that there are five points in there that, that um, uh, were indicated as being uh, gray, and I'm saying that of those five, four were already rectified, two of them prior to, um, uh, actually in January of, of this year, and another two were, were, were addressed by May 21st of this year. So I'm saying that four of the five issues that, um, that, that uh, were put in this letter were already addressed and were taken care of. A review is normally performed to assist the entity to improve, and that's what they did. They were working with Deloitte and Touche to um, implement uh, these, these recommendations, and they did. They did it uh, in good faith, and they worked diligently and hard at, uh, at getting it done, and I think they, they did a commendable job. Based on what you know now from Deloitte and Touche, and the response and the work that was done, would you all have fired Monsignor Benedetti based on what you know? No, I would not. In the beginning, you know, I, I started to say earlier that a review is normally used as a tool to uh, help improve the operations, and, and that's what he was doing. And even earlier, we said that a lot of these, these uh, discrepancies predated Monsignor James. There were certain practices that were done and were continued. And when the auditors pointed out that these practices needed to be changed, they were. Sir, I'd like to ask you, it must have taken a lot to come out here in public. You all are low-key financial type people who normally no press conferences or nothing to do with What is really going on here? Do you think the archbishop is being controlled or influenced to say this? Because it doesn't make sense based on the facts that we present. You know, we're here to speak on the financial uh, position, and and um, I think what you ask is a, a good question, and I think it's a question that many many people are beginning to ask. What is really uh, behind all of this? I don't have an answer for uh, for that, but that's something that many people are beginning to are question you also. concerned at the division in the church. It's uncomfortable, like you say, we're low-key people. This is not something we do and we, we like to do, but we feel it's important enough to speak the truth, and that's all we're trying to do. In, in the letter um, Archbishop Aberon sent out, on the bottom it says, it quotes some of um, what was said in Deloitte and Touche, but at the very bottom it says that an audit at this time is impossible. Um, where did that statement come from? Was that actually in the review by Deloitte and Touche? I never saw the word impossible. And you can verify that because a part of that packet is that report from Deloitte and Touche. So you can look for it, but I don't recall ever seeing it in that letter at all. Based on what was said in Deloitte and Touche, is it possible to come to that conclusion? No. Um, no. The financial statements 
for the past fiscal year were completed and submitted. There were corrections made, and uh, the next deadline was August 15th. But as I said earlier, the, uh, Monsignor James was removed well before that deadline. And I think we, they were on track to complete everything for that sub August 15th sub submittal. So all four of you gentlemen were part of helping get the finances back in order, is that correct? For both, either the Cathedral Basilica or the cemeteries, yes, that's correct. Okay, so now that Monsignor James has been removed, um, what's going to happen? How are they going to complete this, you know, the, the turning in of the necessary documents or um, what's next? I think that's going to be left up to whoever this new, um, new group is we, to address. We know now that the allegations of financial misconduct simply don't add up. So based on that, what do you think would be the motivation behind uh, the removal of Monsignor Benevente and also implicating all of the finance council in allegations of financial impropriety? You know, as I said earlier, I think that's a question that many of us are starting to ask. More and more people are starting to ask that very question. Did you ever hear from the Archbishop? He talks about communication. Has, have any of you, the council, been contacted by the Archbishop regarding this matter? Uh, no, I'm not on the council. I was asked by, by Monsignor James to assist in the Catholic cemeteries, and I did so. And um, I remember writing a letter in February to the Archbishop um, detailing what was being done at the Catholic cemeteries. And I remember putting in that letter that if anyone needed to discuss these items with me, I was more than happy to do so. Did you ever receive a response to your letter? Never. I just want to say the truth. That's all. And what do you think will be the outcome? I don't know. Do you, I don't know. Are you calling at this point for Vatican intervention? They have financial people who will be able to look at this from You know, that's a bigger um, bigger nut that I want to tackle. All I wanted to do was get the truth out regarding the, the, uh, my work in the cemetery and with the other two, what they were doing over here with the basilica. And, and that was really what I wanted to do, stick to the... So the Archbishop should have known that a lot of these um, inaccuracies were correct? Either him or um, the finance officer, Deacon Dominic Kim. Yeah, well, you can see what we have on, on if you look at those documents, you can see the, 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 uh, the disconnect between what is being said and some of the documents that we already submitted. What about the Finance Council? Uh, the Archbishop says that the Finance Council yeah. was a part of this. Do you think that the Archbishop is just going off of what you're talking about? I don't know. The new fi the Archdiocese and Finance Council? I don't know. We have to ask. Um, I've never looked at the minutes. I, 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 I don't have access to that, and I, I don't know who was involved. Have you approached the Archbishop for a response regarding his letter and the contradictions that it shows to the Deloitte team? No, I, my understanding is um, Senior James hasn't received a letter yet. So but he, he, did, he did talk to the Archbishop or send a letter to the Archbishop to clarify what's actually going on through these letters? I, I think you'd have to speak to my senior James and see, uh, see where uh... I'd like to ask all of you, um, we all know the Archbishop from long for long, this is the new character. This is the Archbishop that we know, who would put something out in a statement that contradicts the numbers, the, the facts. Is this the Archbishop that we have? I have a lot of respect for the Archbishop. I, we work with him. I work with him at the Finance Council for years. And uh, in all those years, there were many times I wanted to quit because it brought me in conflict with people I love, but I always served, did what was right, followed what uh, the church needed to do. Uh, and he followed what we, what we advised him. So uh, what I'm saying is, he follows his advisors, and he followed us when we were advisors up to a certain point, and then um, um, I can only assume that, that that's the same uh, 
case or not, but I would love Regarding the, the, the seminary, you know, I'm going to defer that to, uh, to Mr. Antolan, who was our chair. I was with him at that time. But regarding the neo way, what I'd like to say is um, I have a lot, I have my own opinions, my own personal opinions. But if you want to learn more about, about that, I thought there was a really wonderful article by Chuck White, you know, that explained uh, a lot about this book. With the removal of Monsignor James, um, there was also the removal of some of the finance council members. Are any of any of you gentlemen, um, any one of those individuals, removed from the finance council? From the current council. The cur uh, well, the from, current. From the yeah, cathedral. Uh, from the cathedral. Still, still, the cathedral's fine. Yes. Uh, we haven't heard. Uh, we haven't had any. would like to see the church in Guam reunited and, and whatever these divisive elements that are out there, we, uh, uh, they need to be addressed and we need to bring some unity and, and harmony back to our, our, our Catholic church here. It's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late to say you're sorry, I didn't mean it. It's never too late to say any of those things. In the newsletter that came out um, this past, uh, I believe, weekend, uh, there was an image of a church that was being torn apart with the quote, for the lesser road was chosen. Um, any reaction to, to that? Only what I said earlier about unity. You know, um, I feel that there's a definite division, and I want to see that division healed. I'm hoping that the truth, you know, the truth always works, and uh, this is part of that process. It's very uncomfortable for me to come out here and speak. We'll let Mr. Rivera finish first. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Thank you. Thank you. Would any of the other gentlemen care to make comments? A couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, the senior asked me and then Joe asked me to help out with the finance uh, of the church. The church in the, the, the Diocese of Ghana and the parish of Ghana are two separate entities. And what well, the senior was charged with was both. And the problem with the church in Ghana is that there's only 300 parishioners in Ghana, 300 sons. And the, the burden of the whole church Again, is placed on, on the, on, on the uh, 300 parishioners of Again. They have to they have to come up with the money that is required to put the church together, this nice church, the cemetery. All those were based on the 300 parishioners. So we asked the I guess when senior asked if the archdiocese can uh, assume some of the money that the Again. And we didn't get a response from that. So, uh, during the time when this was happening, a lot of times the team would tell me, all right, we can't make payments for taxes. What do we do? What they've done in the past was they commingled the funds. Uh, because if, if you can't pay your taxes, you're going to be penalized. It's going to cost more. So what he did was there was uh, a commingling of funds that shouldn't have happened. But when you are in dire straits of, of cash, you're going to make that decision to, to uh, incur, incur less cost to your, to your organization. Are you surprised at the allegations of financial misconduct lodged against Monsignor Liberty and the, those involved? You know, when you do an audit, I've been involved with a lot of audits of uh, uh, credit unions and banks. But they do audits. Um, audits, like Joe said, are supposed to assist you. 
Um, they come up with recommendations and then the answer to those recommendations. And even before an audit is closed, it's an exit interview. And in that exit interview, you try to correct what some of the officers are, are saying about the audit. And that never happened with us. They would come in and get and look at the information and then uh, nothing was disclosed to the finance committee on the audit. Until we got the letter that uh, was so great and Was there any ever any a point in time where Monsignor would spend money or uh, without accounting for it, or did he always account for uh, every dime that he spent? Well, you know, I, I, I went and I addressed the accounting of the staff. Um, Monsignor was never there. Uh, the staff was the one that was, was responsible for the cash. Everything went into a checking account. Um, I never saw Monsignor in that time when I was up there. Come in and Okay. Now there were some records that were hard to locate because of, of uh, the, the archdiocese finances being in an infancy stage. Um, so, um, did that predate Monsignor's administration? No, I think I think you're referring to the construction contracts, and you'll see that in the in the packet also. Um, one of the accusations dealt with depreciation and and the and construction contracts that weren't submitted, well, they were lost. And so what they did, the staff at the Catholic cemeteries, they went back to the contractors and the vendors and they secured all of those documents and they prepared a depreciation schedule and turned that in to uh, the Archdiocese on May 21st. So that was one of the major items that was uh, uh, alleged and that was completed. And I want to clarify one more point. In that last item that I said that was not completed, it, it, um, it dealt with the recommendation from Deloitte and Touche, and that was already accepted by the staff, and they were working on that also. And like I said, uh, they were ready to get it completed, um, but the records have now been confiscated, and um, if had they not been, that would have been completed by that August 15th. Uh, we once, once again want to thank you uh, for your presence here. Um, if you, um, we provided media packets with the documents uh, that um, these gentlemen have referenced. Um, they are in the media packets and uh, some of them are already online on the various uh, media sources. 
so you're more than welcome to access those. Otherwise, um, you can leave your email address uh, with uh, Gabby, and we'll be happy to provide those documents to you. Um, other than that, we want to again thank you for coming, and we'll go ahead and conclude this press conference. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I say, wait, I add, um, is this Richard? Any, Richard Ancelan. Excuse me. If you have any follow-up questions after today's press conference, please feel free to call on any one of us: Joe Rivera, Arnie Logan, Rick Drainus, myself, Richard Ancelan, and. Uh, Deacon Steve Martinez. Thank you.